Hey guys, in this video I'll be sharing three of what I believe to be unpopular opinions regarding AQ Worlds. The community is quite vocal on the amount of issues the game has, so I will try to avoid the more brought up topics like the Wheel of Doom, donated items of awesomeness and the 10k chests, which seem to be almost a monthly occurrence as well now. I thought this would be a fun idea to spark up some lighthearted conversation, since I'm sure many people at least unconsciously have a bunch of unique takes regarding this game. Without wasting any more time, let's start with number 3. Okay, let's start with monster types or races or whatever you want to call them. My take is that these monster factions should either be severely reworked or just flat out removed from the game. I believe the Paladin and Undead Slayer class were among the first cases of the monster types being actually relevant, since they did extra damage to undead monsters. Then they released the Blinding Light of Destiny in mid-2012, which originally only did 5% extra to undead. Then after that, the amount of stuff that provided extra damage to undead and chaos monsters just kept increasing, with the release of items like the Undead Flower Bouquet, Formulata Destiny and Corruptor Locked. The point is, yes, it does make sense from a lore perspective that Artix's axe is good against the undead, etc. But all it does in the long run is make these tagged monsters weaker compared to monsters that aren't tagged as undead, chaos, elemental, human, dragath, and so on. There's a reason that the challenge bosses are mostly not tagged, because it would just be a lot easier if they were. I think the ideal way to fix this is to give tagged monsters some sort of race specific combat feature that would activate during all fights, which would make them more challenging. Like maybe, chaos monsters could have a small chance to mirror damage to the attacker, and undead monsters could have significant lifesteal on their attacks. Elemental monsters could cycle random elemental buffs for themselves, and the list goes on. Then these would be all scaled to match the difficulty of the monster in question. But of course, this will most likely never happen, so what I'm left with is the opinion that these factions should just be removed. Okay, here's one that would get me eaten alive if I was still on Twitter. Dage's Legion has some of the most boring art in the entire game, period. Sure, there's some really iconic stuff, and Dage is no doubt an extremely talented artist. But why on earth are all the items black and blue? It's like a design is made, and then to make it a Legion item, it needs to be bucket filled with black and blue and gimp. Sure, some of the Nulgath art and Miltonius remakes are repetitive, but you know, at least the color schemes look somewhat unique. Speaking of color schemes and items, I saved my most controversial opinion for last. And that opinion is that I really dislike color custom items. Not only is it extremely tedious to switch around like 4 different color codes at a time with each set, but the ability to change colors really ruins an item in my opinion. To give an example, I really like the Eternal Warrior and Forest Beast Slayer, but it's so hard to build a good set around them because every color can be changed. It also devalues getting a set that has matching colors because you could just change what it looks like. It's not a surprise that most games with the transmog system don't have CC items to the same extent because it would ruin the originality in making sets. And there we have it, my AQ World's unpopular opinions. As you light your torches and sharpen your pitchforks, I want to thank you all so much for the recent support on our videos. I mean, 900 subs is a crazy amount of people. That's about all for now, catch you in the next video.